Hey, BK. What's going on, guys? It's your girl, Big Head Ari, <laughs> and I'm back again with another video, you guys. So, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up on the video, and um, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So, it's raining where I am right now, but I wanted to come on here and do this video. I don't care how long it takes. So make sure you watch this to the end because my most highly watched video on my channel is about why I quit weed and the spiritual reasons about why I quit weed. And it seems that it has the most comments and I've gotten a lot of people requesting that I do a follow up video just to kind of give more advice. And God has been putting it on my heart to continue talking about this topic even though I have so many other talents and so many other things that I feel I can give my experiences on, but I know that we quitting we was something that I struggled with significantly. So um, I made that video, I, I want to say over 10 months ago, and I have, I'm still not smoking. And I, I love my new life. And so um, I know that you can do it too. And so we're going to just kind of freestyle this. I wrote down some areas that I want to cover, but we're going to get into this shit. All right. And I am a Christian. Okay. But please realize that Christians make a lot of mistakes and uh, we are not perfect. We curse, we fornicate, we get horny, we smoke, we, we do a lot of things. But at the end of the day, all those sins put together, it doesn't mean that you don't love God. And the only person that can judge you is God and he knows your heart. So I'm going to go back about go back and, and cover why I personally quit weed. So I quit smoking marijuana, Mary J, the ganja reefer because and let me first start off by saying this because y'all be going in on, on the comments. I love weed. I still think that weed is not bad, but I realized that it was not for me. And I'm going to say that again. I don't think weed is is the worst thing in the world, but I realized that it was not for me anymore. And the reason why I personally quit is because I have a huge purpose in this world, just like you. And so I would smoke weed, I would roll up, roll up, roll up, and then I would just start thinking about the things that I know I'm meant to do here. I'm an entrepreneur. I got my own business. I have a cleaning business and it's growing. It's successful um, in its own right. I can do makeup. I I've been working on, you know, taking more makeup clients and perfecting my craft there. I have a lot of talents. I could sing. I could do a lot of things. And every time I would think about those talents and my purpose, I realized that we was not parallel to that. It, 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 it wasn't it wasn't in my it wasn't in my lane anymore. Because I'm the type of person that have has a very uh, excessive kind of spirit. And so if I do something, I go all in. So like if I like you, bro, I like you. We in love now. Okay, about to get married tomorrow. That's just how I am. And when I would smoke, I would wake up and smoke. I started get, I started to become a functioning marijuana smoker. To where I could go to my, my corporate job and I could do all my work. I could work from home and be smoking a blunt, smoke in a car, smoke before I eat, smoke before I go out with my friends, smoke before I do this, smoke before for, before I do that. And I became over that shit, just plain and simple. I became over it because it was just becoming like redundant. It was just becoming like just, uh, okay, do it again. Run out of weed, go see my weed man again. Run out of weed, go see my weed man again. Buying cigars. You know, my weed, my car smelling like weed, my clothes smelling like weed. And, you know, I became a mom. And when I got pregnant, I was like, oh, no, I'm not smoking. And I would hear so many girls tell me, like, you know, you can smoke while pregnant. There's no studies that shows that it harms your baby. I've even seen that in the comments. And I just think that's bogus. No offense to you, ma'am, if that's what you think and that's what you do or you have encouraged another pregnant woman to do that. But I don't I didn't think that a, 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 a child that did not ask to be here deserved to live in a mom's body that she is just abusing 
and smoke filling up in there and the baby in there feeling lethargic and you know i would talk to my child while she was in my stomach i would read to her we get cravings and all the people that would tell me it don't affect the child yes it do we could argue about it all day i'm still gonna think that because they are becoming dependent on it in your body just like you and you know you see babies they come out and their mom was smoking all this all this weed when they was pregnant and drinking and they might be shaky or they might be hyperactive or just because america hasn't given you a study to prove that it harms the child it don't mean that it don't period so you can argue with me but i don't care i don't think that a growing fetus deserves that i think that if you decide to keep your baby you should you owe that child a pure body until you pop it out after the baby not inside of you no more that's your business but while the baby is growing no so i quit because i was tired of seeing my weed man i was tired of the every day just smoke 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 i was tired of losing weight because people think it don't affect your appearance yes it do your lips be mad dark your teeth my teeth nice and white your teeth start getting a little yellow tint to it um your skin look pale just let's keep it 100 all right because People that do these type of videos, I appreciate them because when I wanted to quit, I was looking on YouTube for a person that quit weed so I could get inspired. But I didn't. I had to make my own because I didn't feel like people was really keeping it a buck. You know what I'm saying? You start looking pale. If you, you know, some girls is. I'm a skinny girl. I'm a small lady. But like, you know, if you if you kind of on the thicker side, now you eating, you got mad munchies, you just gaining pounds for no reason. If you small like me, you losing weight because it's hard for small women to, to retain weight anyway. You losing weight because you can't eat without smoking. I was getting tired of that. I was just tired of it. I was over it. And I felt like I'm not about to cut down. That's bullshit. I have a strong mental capacity. here. I have a strong mind. And that's what it's really all about. So I didn't want to say, oh, I'm going to just smoke on, on at the end of the night, in the nighttime. Or I'm not going to smoke Monday through Friday, but when the weekend hit, I'm going to get high as a kite and then go back. No, I didn't want to cut down. I didn't want to just be like, you know, I'm going to just do it sometimes. No, it's over. God's promise for me and my purpose, I'm not going to reach all of my goals. I'm not going to do all the things that I know I'm meant to do if my mind is mad cloudy, period. And you know, I, I know it's mad people that are coming to comments like, oh, nah, I, I work very well high. I function very well, you know, when I'm high. Everything that sober people could do, I could do it when I'm high. Why you need to do it then? For what? You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Just because you're a functioning weed smoker don't mean you're not addicted. If you, if you can't go a day without smoking, you're addicted, period. It's an addicting substance. And let me tell you something. Weed is not like reefer. It's not like the reefer back in the days. Okay. They spraying stuff on the weed. Some days you go to your weed, man, the bud is popping. Some days you go and it's like, damn, bro, what's this? Like, this some dirt. What am I smoking here? What are we doing? What are we doing? And the weed is just not normal anymore. And there's a reason why you can't keep from seeing your weed, man, every week every three days every two days why you buying a gram why you buying an eighth why you buying a zip why you buying this and that so frequently because the weed ain't normal no more period and you know it argue with me let's go i'm ready to go in the comments let's argue about it so i quit because i felt like my mind was cloudy I felt like I could make decisions while I was smoking weed, but I couldn't make decisions to the best of my ability because my brain was a fog. Because after I think about, all right, let me write down my goals, then I'll be like, all right, I'm good. Let me go smoke. After I think about my purpose, then I'll be like, all right, I'm cool. I did that for a little while. Let me go smoke. But when you're not smoking and you're sober, you're going to stay up all night researching whatever it is you want to do for your business. Or whatever it is you're trying to do with your life. And when you sober, you're going to have discipline. When you sober, you're going to be able to focus more. Sit down and watch a movie. Sit down and have dinner with your family without smoking first. Sit down and be a, on a one-track mind. Period. You're not going to tell me it's not true. I've been there. I started smoking in college. I'm 29. I will be 30 in November next month. I smoked for 10 years. 
long time okay and when i learned how to roll my own weed it was history when i ain't need nobody to roll it up for me no more oh now we i'm i'm smoking i'm smoking i'm smoking so i quit because i was tired of it it's dumb it's over with sometimes you gotta outgrow things in your life sometimes you gotta move forward from certain things that you did before when you was younger or when your mind wasn't as mature or complex as it is once you start getting older so I personally quit because it was done deal for me. And I don't want to go back. I don't. How long it took me to quit? Mm. It took me about seven days to get it to where after the seventh day, I was, I'm good now. Now, let's not lie. Was I irritable? Yes. Did I think about smoking every six seconds? Yes. Because it's something that was ingrained in me for so many years. I would think I'm smelling it and I'm not smelling it. I would... And let me tell you, when you decide to quit something, the devil is going to bring it around you more. He's going to tempt you more. So when you go tell your friend, like, yo, sis, I'm about to quit smoking. Oh, sis, damn. Like, you always say you're going to quit smoking. And there goes somebody trying to discourage you and make you think you're weak. No, you're not. Fuck you. You can keep smoking. I'm about to quit. If you got to stop hanging out with Shorty for a little while or forever, so leave her in her smoke. Leave him in his smoke. Was I irritable? Yes. Did my appetite get fucked up? Yes. Um, did I get headaches? Yes. Did I have trouble sleeping, insomnia? Yes. But let me tell you, for all of those things, it's more. It's more. But you got to go through it. For all of those things that I went through, I gained something back insomnia now i got, now i have dreams at night now i have dreams i could i i used to i, I wake up in the morning i could not remember my dream and for for the life of me i would want to remember my dream because god speaks to me he speaks to you too but he speaks to me through my dreams and i always knew that and so one of the first dreams that i had when i quit smoking was about a lion i quit smoking i was dreaming about this lion we was in this field and the lion kept run chasing after me. And I would turn around. And my name means lion of God. My name is Ariel. My name, mean lion, my name means lion of God in Hebrew. The lion would be chasing after me. And then I'd come face to face with the lion. But he won't do nothing. He'd be And I'd be just looking at him like. And I knew God was talking to me. And he was telling me, you're a lion. You are a lion. Watch you roar. Daughter. You could come face to face with all your struggles. And what's going to happen? You're going to tackle them. And if you fail, it's it's cool. Because now you just figured out another way to not go. Go to net, go left. If you don't, nigga, go, don't, don't go right. Go left. Don't go left, nigga. Go right. Face to face with the lion. Period. What you going to do, lion? Nothing. I'm not scared of you. So, then I got my appetite back. Now I can eat. I just eat when I'm hungry now. I'm still going to be a small lady because that's my build, my build. That's my frame. But I eat when I'm hungry. But it's addicting. It's pushed. And the music that we listen to. And society. And all these little different states that's legalizing it. Okay, if you got glaucoma and they say you need it. Or if you got insomnia you get a medical card or whatever the case may be. And they say you need it. Okay, cool. Maybe you don't count in this video. But it's addicting. It's pushed. It's in the music. You think these radio executives don't know what they're doing by encouraging us to, to drink lean and smoke weed and encouraging their artists to make music about drinking lean, smoking weed, fucking bitches, having hoes, cheating on your man, cheating on your girl, being single forever, no new friends. This is not a coincidence, bro. All of this shit is for a reason. And it's pushed amongst who? Colored people. People in general. But our people. Um, I had a comment in the, in the comment section that said, why you, sh can you make a video, Ariel, Big Head Ari, can you make a video about whether or not I should quit forever or just smoke on the weekends or at night? Listen, if you come to this channel, I'm talking to you like you my friend. Yo, ain't no smoking on the weekend. Ain't no smoking at night. No, put that shit away. <laughs> it's over. It's over period it ain't you're not ready yet and i told you in the other video when you got that mindset 
Well, I'm just, I'm gonna cut back. I'm gonna smoke on the weekend. I'm just smoking at night. You're not ready, so keep smoking. Keep rolling up. I don't want to hear you talking about it. Oh, I, I want to quit. I don't want to hear you talking about you want to quit till you quit. So that's why I encourage people. You telling me you want to quit? You ready? Well, I mean, you know, I think I'm gonna stop next week. You're not ready. Roll up. I sit with you. Roll up, cause you're not ready. Because when you're really ready to do something, it's no on the weekends. It's no, oh, you know, I'm going to just do it sometimes. No, because if you like me, you go full force. We addict, we was, we was addicts, period. We was addicts. So when you're ready to quit, you're going to quit. When you're ready to stop doing something, you're going to stop. Because you're going to be ready to see what's on the other side of that addiction, which is withdrawal symptoms. That uh, is annoying. That hurt. That's a headache. That's, that's going to make you feel like you want to you wanna go back and relapse. But until you get that mindset that you're ready to quit, go ahead and roll up. Roll up. And again, roll up. And again, roll up next week, the next, until you say, I'm done. It's not no old boy, I got my last bag of weed. Let me just smoke this. Throw that shit away. It's over. Throw it away. What are you going to miss from one last blunt? Nothing. A little, you, your eyes going to be low. You're going to be chilling, laughing, munchies, whatever. Okay, and that's that. Move forward from it. So until you are ready, keep smoking. I don't care if you think that's bad advice. But it don't make sense to to, to try to trick yourself and say, yeah, I'm going to quit today. And you know damn well you're not ready to do it. So in two more days, you're about to be like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to just hit it once. And now you back smoking. It ain't no hit it once. Stop playing with me. And if you don't get offended because I'm talking to you, how I had to talk to myself in the mirror. It ain't no, I'm going to hit the blunt once. It's no hitting it once. You're going to keep smoking. Because you like it. I liked it. <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's good. It relax you. If you. It give you a fuck it power. You be like, fuck that. I don't give a fuck. Fuck that. He was talking shit. Fuck him. But when you stop smoking, you start feeling your feelings. Feeling your feelings. Feeling them. Feeling your feelings. Oh, yeah. I'm mad as fuck right now. And I'm not even about to smoke. I'm about to feel this. Go take a walk. Go play with your kids. Go walk your dog. Go write down your goals. Go work out. Go watch Go watch something on um, Netflix. Go to sleep. Do something else. It's over. Stop. <laughs> Stop it. Um, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of having a clear mind. And it's raining. And that means cleansing. Cleanse your body. But the importance of having a clear mind, it's important to have a clear mind because there's so many things that come up against our, our, our minds, our mental, our mental health. You know, as soon as you wake up in the morning, most of us get on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. And there's always something that's making you compare yourself to somebody. There's always somebody that's ahead of you. There's always some fucked up shit on the news. There's always some crazy, you, you, you might, your, your finances might be off. You know, you just might be in different different situations. So it's important to have a clear mind so that you can realize that you cannot, you got to block everything out and you got to realize you cannot focus on negativity because negative things are always going to be there. It's always going to be there. You might always be a dollar short. Hopefully not, but you might always be a dollar short. You might always, you know get attached to people who are broken who are hurt you might always be the strong one in your household you might always you might always have a lot of negative things happening around you we all got negativity happening around us but you got to find some type of way to rise above it and having a clear mind cannot happen and help you to make those wise and focused decisions when you're high you can't do that when you high. i'm not gonna argue with you when you high as a kite all the time you're not your right. You're not yourself, cause you ain't come out your mother smoking. You ain't. You wasn't ten years old smoking. I hope you wasn't. <laughs> you could have been. But you gotta have a clear mind so that you can see the things that's for you and reach out and grab it. When you high all the time, it could be right in front of your face, but you don't even realize that because you're so high all the time. When you high all the time and you hanging out with other people that smoke, you don't even realize those are not your friends. You're not even like them. But you so high. They so high. Y'all all man high. Y'all all just think, oh, well, shit, we buddies. We, we supposed to be together. This is my round. This is my person. No, it's not. You don't even belong with them. You've been, you been above them. Even with your high self. 
but you with them because y'all got something in common. Weed. So, you need to be tired of seeing your weed, man. All right? You need to be tired of rolling up. You need to be tired. You're going to have more money in your pocket because you're not going to be spending that much. And you need to move forward from it because you can and you got it and you're strong. And email me if you need a person to, to cheer you on because I got your back. It's nothing. I don't smoke no more. That was a year ago. I don't smoke no more. I don't want to smoke no more. I ain't smoking no more. I don't want weed. You could get to a year just like me and it's going to be many more years because that shit is behind me. I got contracts for my cleaning business. I got more and more makeup clients. I got more and more blessings that have been coming to me. I got an amazing boyfriend that we are looking towards marriage. I got a lot of things that I did not have before. After I gave it up because God told me to. So yeah. I got a potty mouth. I make a lot of mistakes. All of that. But when God tell me to do something and I don't do it, he keep on nagging me like, oh, you, you're not going to do it? All right, you're going to stay in that same rut. You're not going to do it? Okay, you're going to continue being unhappy. You're not going to do it? All right. So I got to listen. So I love you so much. And if you want to talk to me and you need somebody to encourage you, I'll give you my number personally. 917-981-7000. Call me. We could talk. You can email me, bigheadarrybusiness at gmail.com. Because that's what God put me here to do, to help people. I know that already. So, I'm about to make a couple more videos because I'll be slacking on my posting. But make sure you comment down below. Hit the thumbs up on this video. This is as real as it's going to get, all right? I know other people make why they quit weed videos, but listen. This is why I quit weed. This is why I'm not going back. This is why you need to stop. You can. You will. All you got to do is have faith as small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed is super duper, super duper tiny. It's nothing. But we're going to get more and more people to have the same mindset. Because the world ain't trying to push this. They're trying to tell you to roll up. I'm trying to tell you to cut that shit out. It's over. It's old already. All right? So I love you. Make sure you comment down below. Hit the thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me some more topics that you want to hear me talk about. If you want me to keep talking about weed, let's talk about it. If this is what I'm here to do to help somebody, another person, to put the weed down, then I hear you, Lord. I'm ready to do it. Use me as your vessel, God. And I pray for all the people out there right now that are addicted to marijuana, God. I pray that you come into their mind, come into their heart. And allow them to realize the strength and the power that they have in their mind and their body, God. Give them the strength in their mind. Give them the strength in their mind because that's all it takes is a mental strength. Give them the strength in their mind to realize that they don't need it. Help them to realize that they need to overcome this addiction. Help them to realize that it is an addiction. And to, to be real with themselves. And to, to remove denial from their mind. Help them to see their purpose and the things that they are put here to do. The things that you want them to do. And Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. I thank you for all the people out there that this video may touch. And like I said, if you want to talk to me, call me. Rewind the video. I gave you my number. Email me and I will see you guys in the next video.